Hello everyone, it's Loomer. I'm here at E3 and today I'm going to be doing an interview with uh, the creative director of Skull and Bones, Justin Farron. Skull and Bones obviously uh, kind of formed out of the naval combat systems from AC3, AC4 and Rogue, uh, being run by Ubisoft Singapore who worked on, on all that gameplay. Um, so I thought this would be a really cool interview to do kind of from the perspective of the Assassin's Creed community and those people who are interested in kind of the ties between the two, the two uh, franchises, I guess. So, I collected a bunch of uh, community questions. Great, they were go. voted up. Number one question that was asked is from Siplak, who asks, is there only naval combat or will there also be the ability of shipboarding and land combat? So shipboarding is a, it's a very um, you know, a key part of the fantasy of being a pirate. And being able to board your ship is absolutely part of our experience. You see it in the demo. You see it in our gameplay when you play uh, in the demo itself. Um, the exploration aspect of our game takes place by being able to go to locations, visiting your hideout, going to the tavern, recruiting and meeting historical and historically inspired, inspired characters. That's really where the, um, you know, the, the narrative really takes place, not just in the hunting grounds or the, the demo itself, the disputed waters, but it's the entire world. That's where all of those locations and, and exploration takes place. Okay, cool. But um, with regards to like shipboarding, for example, like in the demo we saw, it's mainly just kind of a cutscene that happens really quickly, so is that kind of indicative of the rest of the land-based gameplay where you're not going to be necessarily controlling a pirate walking around with a sword and boarding ships? Well, this is the tip of the iceberg. What you're seeing now is uh, one mode of our entire game, and boarding is not just a cutscene. It's uh, being able to be in position, strike, it's a high-risk, high-reward maneuver. And the main thing to remember is you're in a multiplayer context, right? So there's 10 players that are playing. Uh, boarding has to be something that happens very fast, it's very effective. If you can imagine how boarding would be in, uh, say, a uh, uh, 10-minute context uh, in a multiplayer match, that's not the experience we want for the loot hunt. Yep, yep fair enough. Okay, great. Uh, next question, second highest voted question is from Alex Terran, who asks, uh, uh, it's kind of similar, but two questions. Will there be a single player, and if so, can we disembark from the ships? You can always play solo in Skull and Bones. We're not forcing you to play in PvP deathmatch type in encounters. Our experience is going to be the ultimate pirate experience, and that means being able to control where you go and what you do and how you do it. So you're going to be able to control a pirate. You play as an upstart pirate uh, who, who leaves the Caribbean, refuses the king's pardon, and heads for sail uh, around the southern tip of Madagascar and into the wide and expansive Indian Ocean, and that's where you begin to hunt. And you realize that you're at the bottom of the food chain. You've got to work your way up, defeat other players, defeat other pirate kingpins, historical and historically inspired uh, kingpins on your way to becoming the ultimate pirate kingpin of the Indian Ocean. Okay. So, but disembarking specifically, is there an you, answer you, that You'll be know? able to explore the, you know, the, the hideout right now, that's what we're talking about. Oh, okay. But, you know, it's, it's very early and we, we yeah. want to keep some surprises for you guys as we move forward. Yeah, that's true. As a reminder, fall 2018 is the current uh, release date, so there's still quite a bit of time. Well, the but. biggest thing to remember is we are a tactical action game that really centers around the, uh, the the, just the, the hunt, the idea of being a predator at the sea, being powerful at the helm uh, of your ship, that's the core of our experience. But of course we're wanting to explore all aspects of the pirate fantasy, the things that really make you feel powerful in the age of sail during the golden age of piracy. Okay, great. Uh, next question. This one's very... Uh, <laughs> the AC fans really really like this question and need to know about the shanties. So Chase Lee is asking, will shanties make a comeback in Skull and Bones? Can't have a pirate game without your crew singing your worries away. I agree, and uh, I, I know that you visited our studio, yeah. you saw our production uh, uh, process. The idea of being a pirate, you're sailing at sea, you have a, a crew that's got to do work, uh, that's what a shanty is all about. And we've re-recorded some of the other shanties that you've seen in AC4 and AC Rogue, but it's not just that, it's recording new ones that really encapsulate the era, uh, the time period and the locations that you'll explore. But shanties are back and they're bigger than ever. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so a little bit of context a oh, month well, ago. Oh, yeah. uh, shanties uh, in different ships, the shanties change in size. So a smaller ship, the shanties, you saw it, like the shanties are very small, the depth and the number of people singing is smaller. The bigger ships, the bigger ships uh, have a more and more people singing, more and more people involved in the shanties, more complexity, that kind of stuff, more layers. And there's also, uh, we can cut this out if it's not public, but there's also ladies in the shanties as well? Oh, I mean, in the golden age of piracy, men and women were treated equally on the ship. Um, we want to make sure that people feel, um, you know, they're able to play the type of pirate that reflects their personality, their play style, and their interests. 
Yeah, so some of the shanties in a break from like the AC games have, uh, you can hear some women singing, it's really cool. I mean, cool. we even have yeah. female captains. You see it in the CG, in the, uh, in the gameplay demo, um, and crew members. Uh, uh, the order of how we handle all of the, the orders from the captain to the quartermaster to the people who are manning the cannons and the, and the weapon stations, you'll hear different characters who are male, female, different ethnicities, different backgrounds and regions. It, it's a mix. A pirate ship was a true democracy, and you had people from all walks of life who wanted to basically push themselves towards something better. When you were born in, during that period, you were born and your station was fixed. There was no way for you to push yourself up, and this is your chance to really push yourself beyond anything that, that was destined for you. Great. Yeah, so a little bit of context. A month ago, I was at uh, Ubisoft Singapore. We did a bunch of workshops around the game. Got to see the some of the recorded shanties and hear them and how they were mixing them together. Everything's been re-recorded. There's nothing recycled from the AC games. They sound great. They're a little bit more rougher, I think, um, in addition to all the improvements, like the different crew sizes and the women singing. It's really cool stuff. Okay, moving on. Uh, Dark Horse KCS, will there be an Easter egg to tie into AC Black Flag, kind of like what Ubisoft has done with Watch Dogs? And Jay Bristow asks if there will be a Jackdaw appearance items, maybe as a Ubisoft Club reward. Um, Easter eggs are not Easter eggs if you spoil them. <laughs> Uh, but there's lots of surprises in our game. There's lots of things to discover and collect. And it's really important to remember that this world is just now unfolding. We're just now sharing it with you. And just stay tuned and, and constantly be on the lookout. Watch all of our assets, watch our trailers, learn more about our world, and get on board with us. I mean, the Keepers program is not uh, something where we want six people's opinion or ten people. We want everyone who wanted to be a pirate from the time they were a little kid to be part of this journey of making the ultimate pirate game. All right, great. Okay, so next question is from AC Theories 1. Is there a cr character creator and a ship creator or modifier? Well, customization is a very key aspect of our game. It's a very key element of your progression towards the top of the food chain. Being a pirate in, in Skull and Bones is about reflecting who your, your, your true nature is as a pirate. You'll be able to select from multiple characters, and you can see some of the captains themselves. And also, they'll evolve over time, uh, You know, being able to change the way that your, your captain looks, as well as the crew will have some level of customization as well. Okay, great. Uh, and ship customization as well, right? Deep and rich is what we, we say. And it's not just cosmetic. It's not just how you look, it's not just the sails, it's not just your guild colors or emblems, but the, the gameplay itself is customizable. Okay, great. All right, we're almost out of time, so just really quick, maybe some rapid fire. Um, how big are the interior of the ships? Will we be able to go to the captain's or crew quarters? We'll see more as we talk about the game, but your ship is massive, and we want players to really feel control of a powerful ship at sea. Um, you're not just playing a, an avatar of a ship, you're a captain at the helm of the ship, controlling a big, vast crew, and it's a huge, massive thing that we want players to be able to understand and feel an affinity and a connection to. Okay, maybe one more. Um, let's see. Let's talk about the, uh, the sea monsters. Uh, I don't know what Jill, <laughs> Jill Andros asked from the trailer. It seems we can face uh, sea monsters. The game have other mythological creatures like mermaids. The um, mythology of Skull and Bones is one where we see the world through the eyes of the pirates of the day, and they were afraid of things like uh, the kraken or giant squids. Um, that, that's really the feeling that we want you to have when you're sailing in our world. When you're in our shared systemic world and you see a, a whale crest or you see something that maybe is a little bit unfamiliar or on the horizon, we want you to be afraid, whether it's a ship, uh, a pirate hunter, or the VOC, or possibly something else. So it seems like it's mainly rooted in realism, but some parts may be kind of as the sailors had kind of imagined things as well. well it seems. Uh, stay tuned. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the biggest thing is our world is a world that reacts. There's a consequence. If you're, if you're sinking ships or engaging in the environment, you never know what could come out. Okay, fair enough. All right, and that's all the time we have. So thank you everyone who uh, in voted on questions and submitted your questions for Justin. Justin, thank you so much send for taking more, time. Send more, send more. We, yeah. we want to get people involved and sign up. Go to skullandbones.com game or sp yeah. skullandbonesgame.com. Yeah. Can we edit that one? <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's go to skullandbonesgame.com. You can register for our live phases online and be part of this experience of building yeah. the best pirate game ever. Yep. There's also a Skull and Bones game on Twitter and then there's some unofficial subreddits, Discord, get involved with the community and yeah, stay tuned for more uh, about the game. It's, it's a ways out still, so plenty to learn and reveal. So. Let's go play. All right, thanks. See ya.